Hey, what's up, dude? Not much. How's it going? Uh, I just woke up, honestly. <laughs> you just woke up? Yeah. What time is it over there? Seven in the seven in the evening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I picked up an extra shift tonight, so I actually am going to be going to work here uh, a few hours. <laughs> On your way? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Oh man, yeah, uh, yeah. It's been killer over here as well. To be honest, I've worked like fifty hours. Oh, about fifty. Hours. No, fifty-one. Fifty-one hours this week so far. Nice. So, oh, yeah. Are you? Yeah, you gotta. You gotta work the rest. Do you have the weekend off, or do you gotta work the rest of the weekend too? I mean, uh, I got today off. Uh, no, I got this evening off, and then I've got um, tomorrow off, and then I'm back on. I'm back in on Sunday. Oh yeah. So, yeah. I got like, yeah, I got, I got like one and a half days off this week. Which I'll take what I can get. <laughs> That's not like me. Yeah, but I'm, I got sick as well. So, like, if I sound super bummed up, it's because I got a cold. So I'm drinking cold. <laughs> hey, at least it's not, uh, at least it ain't COVID. I don't know if my uh, camera keeps going off, but um, yeah, it's weird. My uh, phone is keep, it keeps like going off. So, Hush. Who knows? Um, if if you can still see me on camera, then that's cool. But if not, that's also cool. <laughs> it it was kind of cutting out there for a second. I don't know why. It was weird. Uh, well, I'm, this is all new to me, man. Oh, yeah. I've never, um, yeah, I've never done this before. This is cool. Yeah. But yeah, so <sighs> thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. Uh, fucking, uh, fucking love Wolf and Crown. I, I, I like your YouTube videos. I wish you'd do some more of them. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like, I keep meaning to get back into doing YouTube stuff. Um, but basically, how that came about was I, um, I got some time off work during the pandemic and I was like going stir crazy trying to think like what what can I do with my time so I was just like okay cool try and try and learn how to make some YouTube videos and, you know sure. it's only it's just covers at the moment but maybe like when I get some more free time I'll probably come back around uh, but I wanted to do more sort of original things you know, I feel you. Uh, co the the shutdown and all that and all the time off is kind of what got this page started. So I did yeah. I feel that. That's it, man. Like um, it's crazy to think that like nothing's really been normal for about two years. You know, whereas like. Before that, I think we all took advantage of like how it was normal to go to shows, how it's normal to just meet people in a bar, you know, and oh, yeah. chill with your friends without having any restrictions and that kind of thing. So, yeah, the pandemic's like really made people like it's really shook things up. So, I ended up starting a YouTube channel, you know, your. Instagram's really taken off. You know, you got a bunch. You got a bunch more followers since I first started following you. You know, so it it's been pretty steady for sure. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, are, are you at the same pub that you were at before the shutdown? So yeah, this. Me and um, me and my friend took over this pub in August, but it was like there was rumors that this pub was gonna. When it shut down before, there was rumors that it wasn't gonna reopen. You know, we all thought we'd lost the pub um, after 
October of last year. And then it remained like vacated for the best part of the year. And then all of a sudden the company that owns the place were just like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to reopen this pub. And, uh, yeah. So we were like, okay, let's, let's apply for the position. See, see if you know, if we can get it. And we did it. And, you know, the first week, Last week was a great success, and hopefully it's the first in many, you know? Well, hell yeah. Well, awesome, Dave. Happy for you. Thank you. I know, uh, uh, I know a lot of people uh, kind of had a hard time swinging back into some semblance of normalcy coming out of the shutdown, so that's awesome. Yeah, it was, de Land yeah, it was for sure, man. It was definitely... Um, it was definitely unusual in the first sort of few weeks, the first month, kind of getting back into things like not wearing masks and having all restrictions. I remember the first time I went into a gym, like after not going for so long, like it was, it was just weird. It was crazy because like it, it was, being around people again and being in that environment, like you almost, you forgot how it felt, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and shows, shows as well. In fact, shows was the weirdest thing to go back into because like, we never played any restricted shows. We just played, we just didn't play at all until restrictions were lifted. And then when restrictions were lifted, it was just everybody crammed back into this room um, and it was sold out and it was hot and sweaty and there was no social distancing and it was like it was like covid never happened you know and it was a very surreal experience that everybody had forgotten about and it was like it's great you know so hopefully it continues but who knows right I, uh, I have, I think our last show was like November of 19. So still haven't got to, uh, oh, for real? Experience that. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that was coming on to two years ago. Dude. Like, yeah, that's, that's such a shame as well. Like how is things over there? Um, I haven't really gone out of the state much. Um, maybe a little bit over in the Kentucky, Ohio, but nothing crazy. But here in West Virginia, um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, reluctance. <laughs> and yeah, um, people from West Virginia are a very rebellious, very reluctant, stubborn bunch. Sometimes, oh, for real. sometimes to a, sometimes to a detriment. Um, so, so you you can imagine. I think the people in the UK are the same as well. You know. Yeah. Like when it came to like wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, and getting the vaccine and not getting the vaccine. You know, it was very divided, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. but everybody's just as stubborn as everybody else. You know. Right. This. Maybe maybe it's a little more commonplace than we think. <laughs> mm, yeah, for sure. But you know, you just gotta get on with it. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> well, uh, this. Uh, so you got you've actually been playing. How many shows have you guys got to do since uh, Sit. the shutdowns kind of let up a bit? Uh. I've played four shows so far, four shows so far, and then the remainder of the year, we got four more, I think four more shows. Oh yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, four, four more shows before the year is out. Uh, so yeah, it'd be eight shows between 
the lift in of restrictions and the new year. Uh, it, it could have been more, but you know, work gets in the way and stuff like that. Right. Damn dangerous jobs. That's it, man. You can only be a weekend. You can only be a weekend warrior, you know. Or, or in, in my that. case, in my case, I work weekends as well. So it's whatever I'm lucky enough to book up. Right. Yeah. And and I say day job, then I work midnights. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. For sure. But that's it. You got to like. Unfortunately, you know, these days playing riffs don't pay the rent, you know? Yeah. I, w I wish it did, but, you know. Well, uh, these days, it's hard to even uh, play dad riffs in a cover band. Like, that used to be the, the de facto, you know, it's like, oh, you can always go do, like, you know, a co cover band and at least make money. But now even those are pretty much dead. Oh, dude, man, cover bands, they make more money. Like, they, they're the ones that somehow, they'll, so they'll make like three or 400 pounds a show. Right. Which is, I guess it's not the greatest amount, but when you're playing like a weekend, and you say you do two shows a weekend, that's 200 quid for a member. And right. you ain't even, you ain't even got to play your own song. You, you just have to kind of, have to know how to play other songs, other people's songs. Yeah. You don't even have to do them well either. You can just, you can just, you know, crack on, slop your way through it and get paid. Yeah. But you, uh, around, uh, I don't know, at least it seems like uh, you see more DJs or whatever than you do yeah. like like house bands or, I don't know, maybe like a wedding band, but so many people just get a DJ and call it a day. That's it. And the DJs, yeah. sometimes the DJs just sit, with it, sit there with a laptop and um, yeah. have Spotify, you know, so... Yeah. They live, they just queue up a playlist and stand around and get drunk. That or they may, maybe <laughs> if you, uh, if you get like a really, I don't know, uh, an expensive DJ that has like some lights or something that he may program and, uh, oh, I don't know, whatever pro program where they can actually sequence lights and shit. There, there's stuff you can get, I think. Like we looked into it, um, but we couldn't. Um, we couldn't. We haven't figured that out yet. But there is there. There are things that you can do that will map uh, MIDI or whatever. Like I'm not even going to try and pretend I know what I'm talking about because I literally have no clue. It's way out of my depth. I I think I think I actually have one of those programs because I got like a native instrument. Um, a complete audio six uh, interface. All right. And it, and it came with a bunch of native instrument uh, software. I'm almost positive that one of them is specifically for that. And there's one of them that's like Tractor DJ2. I've not even opened that shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. I got a, like, I've got a bunch of. Um, do you know when you get like, uh, you'll get like an audio interface or you'll get like a piece of musical equipment and it'll come with a bunch of like free basic software programs. Um, yeah, there's, I've got a bunch of those that I've just not even, like I've looked at them and I've been like, oh, that's cool. And then just never, never used them because yeah. why, why would you? But, yeah. I said the unless it comes to like a dog, or at least like a, I don't know, like a light version of a dog, then I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not really too into it. Dude, Reaper, Reaper is free. Right. Reaper is free. <laughs> <laughs>
I uh, I got that, and then I have a super outdated version of Pro Tools that doesn't even fucking work on my computer anymore. Oh, for real? Yeah. But, nah, dude. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, I just keep hitting that still evaluating button. I feel kind of bad, like, but, but you know. And so, sometimes I'm thinking, like, dude, should I just buy it? Should I just go ahead and pay whatever it is for the license and stuff? But it's like, I don't use it that much. Like, I use it once in a blue moon. I should probably use it more. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to be a cheapskate. I am going to pay for that license at some point this year. Maybe. <laughs> that, that's exactly the same, like, uh same path mental path i go on i'm like you know i really should it's not that much yeah i, I need to support those guys but i'm not using it that much eh, i'll get it later <laughs> like, i probably sound like the biggest cheapskate as well but you know what dude i don't care dude, it's there's, fine there's, there's probably guys that have been going on like multiple years of, of evaluating that software so there's probably people out there that have literally recorded masterpieces on that software, sold it to a bunch of people, done really well with it, and still hit that still evaluating button. So, right, you know, well, I I should probably like like speaking about it. I should probably go ahead and buy it. But before that, I should actually probably go ahead and use it as well. You know, rather than just gaming. Because every, every time I fire up my PC, I'm just like, I don't even touch my guitar. I'm just there gaming. I'm playing like either Dark Souls with Brad or, <laughs> you know, uh, Dark Souls on my own or Call of Duty, Warzone, terribly. <laughs> uh, so. uh, I need to upgrade my PC so bad. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like, there's that's the problem. There's always something better. You can always upgrade to something, but do you need to upgrade? Right. Like you can, you can try to feature proof, but all that really does is maybe buy you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, maybe buy I a thought, few extra gears. I thought I was going to be doing that. I've, I've, <laughs> I've held out pretty well so far. Like, dude, you should have seen me on the way back from rehearsal. Man, my nose was screaming. It was gross. But yeah, no, you can future proof. Well, you can try and future proof, but I, I, in this day and age, there is no such thing. You know, like in like sixty-four gigs of RAM could get you a long way for a while you know what i mean yeah, yeah but who, like who needs that people are, that's it man people are like oh man i need 64 gigs of ram well I'm, yeah i got 32 gigs of ram in my machine and it's like for a while <laughs> yeah dude what are you doing are you working for nasa yeah like, like i got uh, 16 gig i got 16 gig of ram in my pc and that's it like i don't i don't get why anyone would need more than that and unless literally they're running every single piece of like every single vst they've got at the same time on multiple tracks you know it's like what's the point all right i uh alex wills just said he has been called out and alex alex wills probably has been called out because I know for a fact that that guy has a PC and all he does is play RuneScape. <laughs> and I don't, I don't even think that requires like 4 gig of RAM, if that. I would say not. <laughs> but then like, um, I don't, I don't know about like uh, the PS5 or the Series X. But uh, I haven't really checked out the specs on those because they've been impossible to get a hold of. Uh, I got a PS5. The, well, how, what, how much, uh, what's the memory like on it? 
I don't know. No. <laughs> I know on the we, we got a PS4 Pro and we got an Xbox One X. All right, all right. So like they're the best of the last generation, right? Yeah, for sure. So, so the PS4 Pro is I want to say it's eight gigs of RAM, and uh, the One X is twelve. All right. Okay. So so. I don't know anything. I don't. I literally bought a PS5 to play Demon Souls. That's it. And then when Elden Ring comes out, I get that. And I played played a few other games. Like um, I've got uh, the director's cut of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Such a good, good game. It's a great game. It's digitally stunning. But I got re- like my first playthrough of it. I played, I played on the PS4, and this was an original PS4 as well. So this was like fucking. It sounded like a jet engine. Like it was just ready. To, <laughs> it was ready was to take ask. off. Um, and, and then on, on the only difference between the PS4 and the PS5 with that, that game is it locks. It's locked at 60 FPS, which is great. It looks it looks way smoother, you know, but. The PS4, apart from sounding like it was going to take off, held up well. Like they pushed that, they pushed the console to the limits of what it was capable of. You know. Oh sure. Um, I don't know if the One X is the same because I've never been an Xbox person. You know. Um, but yeah, performance-wise, the PS, the PS Pro. Um, holds up a lot better than, of course, the PS4 Slim and the PS4 Original, for sure. I don't know about the RAM in the original, but I know that the Pro like was like a normal PS4 on kind of steroids. Yeah. You know? uh, I haven't really ran into anything on the One X that's like really pushed it. Um, I'm trying to think of like any more like graphics heavy games that I've ran on it. Maybe Star Wars Fallen or Jedi Fallen Order. Um but I mean it handled I've, hmm? ne- I've never played uh, Fallen Order. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of uh, Xbox exclusives like um I know you got the Gears series. I haven't played Gears of War since after three. So I wouldn't be able to tell you anything about Xbox. Yeah. I mean, I, I play games on, uh, we have like uh, the Game Pass or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, uh, I, honestly, I play like, I play more indie games than I do anything. Um, but I did just, for my birthday, I just bought uh, Shadow of the Colossus, ported. Oh, uh, like, the remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ported to like PS4. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, Blue Point Games. Yeah. And they did a great job on that remake. They remade uh, the. They they're the ones that remade Demon Souls as well for the PS5. Oh, sure. good. Okay. And uh, visually, like that game is just absolutely incredible. Um, the the whole game's an experience. You know, I don't know if you like that kind of thing, but the whole. Um, the whole series I'm like obsessed with. So I I really was, like uh, I really like Dark Souls and everything. I just haven't I haven't spent as much time with it. Of course, I, as much as I, as we've been talking about games, I hardly ever get time to play anymore. My oh, uh, really? my seven year old hogs it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, see, I don't have kids, so I like I am the kid, you know. <laughs> Word. I um. I actually I, I still have a GameCube, so I need to like hook that up down here or something and play uh Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Oh yeah, dude. Or um, the Resident Evil remake on that game. I got on that uh, on that console, dude. Like I, I remember buying. Oh, first of all, I remember being scared of the first one 
on the original, on uh, the PS1, yeah. where it was all like blocky and stuff. And then they remade, <laughs> they remade it on the GameCube. And I was just like, I remember buying that game and I just, I didn't even dare play it. I got like past the first little bit, saw the zombie at the start of the game that's in like the hallway and I was just like, nah, dude, that's it. I'm <laughs> And then when the second, when Resident Evil 2 remake came out, there were moments where I had to turn that game off as well because it was just so scary. It was like, and I'm a thir I was 30 when I was playing that. Like, I'm 32 now and that still <laughs> scares me. Like, because it, I don't know, it's just, I'm just a big wimp. But yeah, it was so stressful. Um, <laughs> there's been there's been a couple games that that got that got me like with like a jump like jump scares and stuff like that like uh, oh there's one I'm really wanting to play um, they just finally added uh, Visage to Game Pass this this uh was it this age? Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I heard my so my friend Ryan told me to play that because he said it's super scary, and I'm just like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not playing anything scary right now. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to have a good time. It's uh, it's one of those games that came out or was developed after uh, uh, like PC. <coughs> was released. You remember that? What's the, what was that game? P PT. PT. Um, it was a uh, well it stood for playable teaser, but it was supposed to be a teaser for a new Silent Hill game that never happened. Ah, uh, I got you right. Okay. There I mean it was it was all over YouTube there for like a year or two. Um and the whole the the whole play teaser the whole the whole thing it was like a big looping hallway and shit and like it was it was real, real uh like psychological and eerie and atmospheric and real oh, that way. yeah it's real creepy but uh and there's been i don't know how many different indie games come out like developed on unity that are you know like you can tell they even like have a lot of the same assets from PT, um, but <clears throat> man, that, now I'm bummed because I, I was really looking forward to a new Silent Hill game, and now we're never gonna get one. Oh man, I, the only thing I'm trying to think while well, I played that's been scary. Uh, the, so me and my friends play a game on PC called Phasmophobia. If you heard oh, of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like ghost hunting and stuff and <laughs> man that is like i don't know even though it's like obviously not real yeah yeah it's it's terrifying like you you're in a you're in a pod like in, there was one where we were in a prison and it was like oh yeah it's a ghost that only responds to you know people when they're on their own so they're like leaving me in the room on my own on purpose, and I'm like, God, I can't even do that. I don't want to do that because I'm the, I'm always the one that gets killed by the ghost on Phasmophobia, you know. So it it was like a running joke that the ghost would always get me, and it <laughs> almost nine times out of ten it did, you know. Um, and then there's a game called Devour, which super crazy game where um. You're in a house with. Oh, I'm trying to remember. You have to like. You're getting chased around the house by a possessed woman. And you oh have, wait. A you yeah. have to burn goats in like a <laughs> chalice thing, and the more goats you burn, the angrier she gets. I've seen that. <laughs> 
And then when you're, uh, yeah, and then when you get killed, you kind of like just crawl around on the floor <laughs> and then wait until somebody comes and revives you. And then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. And that, that was like, and we played that for like a day and it was just one level because it was in the beta stage. So I think they've added, I think they've added way more levels now. So it's probably oh, yeah. time to revisit that. Um, it's time for me to upgrade my PC. So yeah, it, on this. If you, well, if you ever want to get news, hit me up, you know, you know where I'm at. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Then I played the Resident Evil 8. Uh, I played Resident Evil 8 on PC, that was great. Um, I was really sad whenever you had to kill one of the daughters because, you know, they were yeah. kind of awesome. And then they... Right. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much the extent of my gaming now. I don't even remember what I was playing last, honestly. Uh, oh, what was I playing? I was playing a little bit of For Honor. Oh, uh, yeah. And then and I was on like a like a retro game kick for a minute. And, and actually just because I got a Super Nintendo Classic. And I was just playing in like Castlevania and Metroid. And, uh, oh, right. And, Castlevania, uh, it's a classic. Uh, Castlevania Four specifically, which, oh, is, really? which is awesome. I've got um, I've got a Castlevania game on my phone actually. Uh, oh yeah. I can't remember which one it is. It was the one they released on PS One. I can't remember. Whoa. Symphony of the Night, maybe. I That's the one. That's oh. the one. Well, that was a shot in the dark. Hell yeah. yeah. It, and, dude, that game is super hard still. Yeah. Like, I don't think I got past the first level on my phone. There's just, it's, I don't know, it's just too difficult on your phone. Like, I don't know why they really. I know. I, well, I, I know why they release games on your phone because it's like it's convenient, it's cool. But I remember pl I played all three of the uh, Grand Theft Autos uh, that were released on PS2 on my phone. Yeah. Uh, they released a bunch of the Final Fantasy games on on your phone as well, like uh, specifically Seven Final Fantasy Eight remasters on your phone as well. Yeah. Uh, nine used to be Tomb Raider one and two. You get on, you get those on your phone as well. Um, but it's when because it's a touch screen device, it's difficult to kind of with games like Tomb Raider, like platform games and stuff like that. It's pretty difficult to maneuver. And it just doesn't oh, feel yeah. the same. I'm I would get way too frustrated. I couldn't do that. <laughs> and then you'll be halfway through playing, and then you'll people keep like messaging you and stuff like that. Like especially oh. when you've got fan chats, and you've got like fifty-four, 50, like odd messages that come through at once, one after another. I don't. I don't have time to be black metal right now. I'm being Laura Croft. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So <laughs> <But, yeah>. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've probably driven off a, a good bit of people with our uh, video game talk, but oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's called <laughs> it's it's called rigs of video games, dude. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. That no, I instigated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like have the um, have the, the the Dave Chappelle outlook. Like this is my damn show. <laughs> oh man, yeah, he's uh, he's under the fire right now. I mean. 
who isn't? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. what, was, what was this thing just about like I, like him making? Dude, I have no idea. I think I didn't. I think it's just over him making trans jokes, which oh, uh, which uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I for one, why why is it just now coming up? He's been making he's been making jokes for a while. Yeah, and, for real. And he, and he makes jokes on everybody. Yeah, like I don't know, dude. It's it's a uh, toxic. Like it's it's twenty twenty one. You know, yeah. you can't say that shit. <laughs> That doesn't matter. That doesn't make like what you said right, you know. But maybe I. It's, it's maybe like I, in the in the past, like maybe. his his uh, sketch comedy, for example. Yeah. That that was very um, it was very dark as well. You know, it was very sort of risque. Oh yeah. Like, um, it and it was hilarious as well. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna like sugarcoat it, dude. I thought it like I thought the Chappelle show was hilarious. Oh yeah. Like, it's still probably some of the funniest comedy I've seen. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, the very first episode, like, really sets the tone. Yeah. for the rest of the show like i forgot for a long time the clayton bigsby skit was oh, like the man. first episode dude like that was uh yeah like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, he he could, not have, he could not have that show now for sure oh th there are so many shows from back in the day but, but well, a lot of shows are getting like pulled up now from back in the day. Like UK shows, especially. There's a few. There's there's some shows that were filmed years and years ago. Like uh, there's one called Forty Towers uh, in the UK. It's about a hotel chain, uh, and and that's got some outdated views, you know. Um, and that kind of like gets put under fire, yeah. uh, and thing, things get pulled from Netflix and stuff like that. But it's like, why? I was just talking what, to somebody the other day about a Sanford and Sons episode that, you know, people give. Uh, it was, there's a particular episode written by Richard Pryor that yeah. was, that is like really controversial. Rich um, I, can't, I can't discuss the joke that made it controversial. Yeah, for sure. That's understandable, dude. But, but yeah, it's like, like I say, dude, it's 2021. You've got to respect people's beliefs, you know? Like, cancel culture, unfortunately. Like, I don't know. It sucks, but on the other hand, it's like, you know, you should know, uh, you know, you don't just res just respect everybody, or at least you know if if you're gonna be if you're gonna be an asshole, yeah. then just keep it to yourself. You know. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I guess I haven't really looked into specifically like exactly what it is that people are pissed off over like if it's a very like a very specific instance or just in general I'm, i don't really know i just know people are mad at him and it has something to do with that but for sure it is what it is mm -hmm. uh, well <laughs> all right we'll uh kind of redirect yeah, now we've we spoken about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, dude, uh, since you've actually got some Wolven Crown shows back under your belt again for uh, the remainder of 2021, 
mm -hmm. and going forward, uh, what what's your live rig actually look like? Um, right, so it is a crate power block, which is a real, real cheap sort of, I got it second hand. They don't make them anymore. It cost me a hundred quid, which is about 150 US. Um, and it's a, a mirror DSP quad cortex that um, me and me and the other guitarist Nick use the same, you know, we both go into the same one. Yeah. And then, then it goes out to my power stage and out to his power amp as well. And then uh, we have it set up. So it's got like snapshots. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because I'll be the one that's switching patches, you know. So it'll be like um, me clean him leave on one patch, and then it will be two rhythm on another patch, and then it will be uh, rhythm and lead on another patch, and yeah, that's fucking crazy. I've... It it's a lot to handle. Um, it, well, it was a lot, a lot to get used to. It's kind of it's okay now, but when you have to do that and vocals, you have to like and memorize your parts in the song. You have to like know the songs. Like I have to know the songs better than I used to know the song. And then into that, I'm using the I'm using an Andre Andre V at the moment. Use um, you know what? Uh, just a Anja V. Oh, I've never heard how uh, how their name was pronounced. Actually, See, I always thought it was Anja. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Apparently, it's not. Apparently, it's Anja. So okay. No. Yeah. Why not? Well, yeah. So don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Well. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So I'm using a V into that. Um, that's it but that it could it could all change you know like you know how it is with playing guitar you'll see a new piece of equipment and you'll be like oh, i want to buy that so i'm gonna oh yeah have uh have you retired and or sold the hx stomp i have still got the hx stomp and i use that tonight as well i use that in the other band abduction so it's kind of similar setup but i just use the hx stomp instead of the neural dsp or i uh i remember i bought the crate power block a while back off your recommendation actually oh you did oh yeah. amazing yeah i uh i got that i got the stomp I, I went through a few Blind Six products. I had the HX effects. Cause I was like, yeah, I just want something for easy switching and you know program changes and stuff and have my effects and run it with my Mesa. Well, uh, tubes die and at the most inconvenient times. So I was like, well, okay, I want a backup. So then I what I was looking for, you know, then I ended up selling that and getting the pod go. Uh, oh, yeah, right. And then uh, I got the crate power block because you talk about it so much or talked so well of it. Uh, I didn't get along with it. I, I don't know what the hell. Uh, maybe mine was messed up. Uh, I think mine was messed up, honestly, because I couldn't get the input jack on the front to work at all. Oh, really? Oh, man, that sucks. So, so I was trying to figure out a workaround with the return on the back. Oh, I, I read somewhere that it has like a like a cab emulation when you try to run it like that. I don't know. 
yes, I think there is a little switch, like a little push button on the back uh, that you can press it and then it will and then let it go. I'm not sure if mine had that or not. I think because don't they make it like two different versions of it? I have no idea. Yeah. I just because um, I was looking for something cheap. Yeah, that yeah. was that was really really like um, like lightweight. It came with yeah. a cool little carry bag as well. And at the, at the time, yeah. I was traveling. I was traveling to a place called Barnsley on the train. Um, which is just about two hours north of Nottingham um, to play in a band called Salt Furnace, which was like sort of, um, I basically, between bands, I had like a year, a 10 year gap between bands, you know, and then I joined Salt Furnace and I needed a, I needed a rig that I could transport easily because we rehearsed in a room that only had caps, like there was no available amps. Gotcha. And um, so that's why I got the um, power block um, because it was just, you know, cheap, sure. small. And I just looked and everybody said it was great. So I just grabbed that and then uh, I've put so many different pedals in front of it and it's always sounded great. Like I've even used the dreaded metal zone in front of it and it sounded nice. great. You know, so Hell yeah. yeah. I uh for a minute there I was I had a um I had one of the Ampeg Portaflex bass heads like the pf350 or something all right and um using the effects return on it um with like a distort like a metal zone or, or like the pod go like that that was pretty decent um mm -hmm. it, it just didn't uh it didn't quite have enough push um finally i ended up with uh, Rob Calhoun from Arachnid Cabinets, he kind of recommended this to me because he uh, he runs the the Helix rack, and um, I I wound up with the HX Stomp as well, uh, <coughs> by the way. But he uses a uh, it's a it's a '90s like two U rack uh, rack power amp. Oh, okay. Uh, it's uh, by by tube works it's a most valve uh most valve power amp uh i can't remember the model name but it's a tube works most valve and it's like uh i think it's 80 watts uh most fet transistor which is pretty much like, like having an 80 watt tube amp like the because you know about how like the solid state wattage you got to go like 300 watts to match a 100 watt or 50 watt tube amp or something right. yeah but uh this the tone as well as like the volume to wattage ratio or whatever like it's pretty similar to that of like a tube amp no oh, that's awesome yeah i yeah. um i don't know much about wattage i know that the power block is like 150 watt stereo or something um, but it's like everywhere you like in a practice room it's perfect like you can hear it it's fine um, oh, yeah. it's crazy wow oh, yeah. yeah for sure I, I, uh, I it just had like mine just sounded and I, I'm positive I just had a, a messed up one because I bought it used off Guitar Center. Oh, um, sure. So my, I, mine just sounded like it had a blanket over it. You know what I mean? And I like I couldn't dial it out. Um, you know, awesome. Instead of just instead of just buying another one, I found that thing and and it's working awesome. So Guitar Center, man. I haven't been to a Guitar Center in years.
Like, I hate Guitar Center. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in two. I've been in two in my entire life, obviously, because they're not in the UK, you know. So when I was over in the States, um, my girlfriend at the time, I bought I bought this uh, BC Rich uh, Junior V, uh, which I still uh, well I kind of still I don't have that one. I've got the exact same model. It's a BC Rich Junior V neck through, um, and I wanted. Oh, I I think I wanted the pickups replaced with the EMGs. So um, I was just like, I'm going to go, I'm going to, we're going to drive to Guitar Center. And I gave it to this guy in Guitar Center. And he was like a typical sort of music store looking guy, you know, like he had a cap, you know, the, you know the one, dude, you like, he had a ponytail, a cap on backwards. He had he had like the shirt that said guitar center on it and it's like can you put EMGs in this? He was like, Hell yeah, brother. Gave him my guitar. And because I was because I had a flight, uh I had to leave the States like two weeks after. Um so I was like, Okay, cool. I didn't hear anything back about this uh Pickup upgrade. We went to um, we went to back to the guitar center like a couple of days before my flight because I was just thinking like oh, it's, it's got to be done right now you know it's got to be done by now and we went back to the guitar center and he had not touched the guitar it he just like it was in the case just left there I was like I was so good but you know. And, so that that's my experience with Guitar Center. Yeah. Guitar Center Guitar Center El Paso to be precise. I uh I'll never forget and if anyone else who's been to a guitar center probably <coughs> the same sales line. Uh like if a, uh if a rep gets anything down for you and you go to sit to play it and they're hanging around it's like man that is like yeah that guitar looks great on you oh, oh dude what <laughs> oh dude um, and like, you're like you're there playing a hello kitty strap <laughs> like yeah dude now nah, dude like some guys just said uh guitar center is the line six spider of music stores correct it really is. We got um, <clears throat> we got a similar thing over in the UK right now called PMT. Uh, I think it stands for like professional music technology or something, and that's kind of like the same, you know. Like, and if anyone from PMT is watching this, especially my PMT, <laughs> it's a great it's a great shop, you know. I really really like it. But it's got like, like um, your typical guitar salesman, you know. They've literally played guitar since the day they were born. They know everything about everything. They always know the best, like, what is it? Like a Marshall stack. Nothing will be a Marshall stack. Even though you, you're like, I don't want one. You know, I want something different they're like no nah, dude you need a marshall you know you can't get better than a gibson into a marshall that kind of dude you know not not that there's anything wrong with gibson or marshall because they're both kind of they were great companies back in the day yeah. right <laughs> but you know i wouldn't give that kind of i wouldn't give those companies my money these days you know yeah it's probably not the right thing to say on the internet, but whatever. I'll probably never ever ever meet anyone from Gibson or Marshall anyway. So, I mean, th there are specific pieces of gear from those companies I would like, but I, I'm not 
brainwashed to think it's the end all be all because I'm I don't just play in an Allman Brothers cover band, so you know, I don't have to suck their dick. No, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I like. I would like a JCM eight hundred, but <laughs> I'm not going to buy it brand new from Marshall. You know, I'm going to get one from the early nineties off eBay, or, or buy from a uh, boutique builder that's building better shit than Marshall's building these days. Yeah, but you can't. I can't afford that shit. <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's like you said earlier, arachnid caps, right? I actually looked up arachnid caps because they're quite similar to like what Vader was doing, right? Yeah. Um, and Vader caps, like I always wanted a Vader cap, but I also always wanted a um, arachnid cap because they're kind of like very similar. Yeah. Now the price to get one built would be probably a lot. In fact, I, I'm almost certain it's going to be a lot. And then to get something of that weight shipped from the US to the UK is going to be a lot. And then the duty that I'd have to pay on top of that would be like astronomical. So it's just yeah. so it's just such a shame because like if it was just a matter of like paying for the cab to be built that's fine but even getting it shipped over would be an absolute like i remember messaging the guy from vader cabs and he was just like i'm gonna be real with you dude it's probably not gonna happen because getting the cabs into the uk is a very expensive job no i could i totally could see that <laughs> and answer a question in the chat real quick. Uh, I love the EVH fifty one fifty. I I like the EVH version way better than the PV version. I don't give a fuck if that pisses anyone off, but um, the EVH version is basically plug and play, and it has a usable clean channel, oh, and they have yeah. a bunch of awesome different versions of it, you know, uh, that are all awesome. I had a um, 50, I had a 50 watt. That's another thing that's great about the EVH 5150 is you can literally get a 50 watt version of that amp. And it's probably the most metal sounding amp I've ever played right out of the box. Like you, you didn't need anything in front of it, you know, like it was just straight in the red channel, man was like just insane like th there was more i i think i had in fact my settings were all pretty much noon across the board and then i think i just bumped the mid slightly towards one o'clock the gain i didn't even have past 11 and it was more gain than i ever needed on the red channel you know uh, yeah. Some guy in the chat just said that he got a great deal on a 6505. And you know what, dude? 6505 is great as well. Like, I've used 6505s in the past. Um, more recently, I actually used the 6505 uh, mini head, the 20 watt version, which is also a great, great sounding amp. You know? But to get to match it. 5150 an EVH 5150 you'd need at least an overdrive in front of it to get that tightness you know the only thing I didn't like about the 5150 was it was so noisy like there was that hiss and there was nothing you could do to get rid of it unless you had like um, I think one guy on a forum said like he had a noise gate in front and a noise gate in the loop as well and that completely eradicated the hits. Yeah. But it's like I don't want to have to go through that much trouble to get rid of excess noise, you know. They uh there's a lot of noise gates. I, I mean I've got one that actually you can run for cable 
Um, and you can do the front end, the, the front end and the back, the rear end, like the effects loop with just the one pedal. So, which which noise gate is that? Uh, mine's the Michael Klein Audio Ball Gag. That's uh, the um, yeah, that's the um, the guy that does the Lonely Ghost pedals, right? But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah dude. dude. Oh, he, he's he's the best. He's awesome. I love I love Michael. <laughs> yeah, I was I, if I so if I was to get fifty one fifty again, I would use the blue. Ch is it the blue channel? The blue channel is the kind of middle channel. Yeah. If I was to use fifty one fifty again, I would I would boost that channel, and then I would have. The red channel as a lead, a lead, a lead channel, you know, with, a, with a volume boost or whatever. <laughs> Someone's laughing at the name. Yeah, it, it my has <laughs> a real, real funny sense of humor. So the ball gag noise gate. Um, <laughs> HM2 worship. I can actually. Speaking of HM2s, I'm actually getting another HM2. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not sure uh, which one to get because there's a speak, speaking of HM twos, man. <laughs> literally, Sorry. the man himself just joined. I know, like, like that's, the second, that's the second chat in a row where somebody mentioned the HM two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Joe. Like, <laughs> Joe yeah. was like the candy man of HM2 pedals. He was just like waiting. He was, and then he just started <laughs> burning. He was like, now's my time. <laughs> Somebody's speaking about HM2s. Yeah. He, uh, His ears uh, perk up and he just appears. Oh, for sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Hey, that's, a, uh, that's another awesome noise gate, too, is his endless blockade. Oh, yeah, dude. I know. Yeah, I got one. Oh, sweet. Um. <laughs> and uh, a burning spirit as well. I want to try one. For sure. A burning he, spirit? Uh, he, made me, he made me the 8-ball EQ. Uh, which, if you run it in the effects loop of your amp, it basically turns your amp into a big HN2. Or a, a left-hand wrath more specifically all oh, right okay. oh um yeah it's like a um it's like a i don't know what it is like pedals just to me are just like they just they're insane like there's so many things yeah. you can do with like this well there's so many innovative builders out there that are just like dude man we need something to put sound like this and it's like and you know joe definitely is one of the best you know he does it the brand yeah. that's that crazy looking one isn't it like yeah the eight ball it's got you know just the two rows and knobs the brick isn't it like i don't know six rows or something i, I i'm pretty sure uh who sent me I don't know if it was HM2 Colt or somebody else. Somebody sent me one uh, that they had just got the brick, and and they were asking me about settings and everything. Uh, and I was like, dude, that looks insane. I, <laughs> it's like I have half of those controls on mine. I'm not sure. I'm I'm too like my ADHD goes haywire when I get too many things to mess with to decide no this sounds good and then you tweak it slightly and you're just like ah oh, this sounds even better and then you're like 20 minutes later you're like no it's not as bad before let's go back to that's kind of my problem with like these multi effects and like these amp modelers and stuff like if I buy one I feel like I'll have to use everything mm -hmm. but I literally bought I'll, I'll literally use two patches and that's it 
you know. So I think that's the beauty of like having individual song boxes and just an amp. But then there's also more that can go wrong in a live situation, you know, like if a cable craps out on you or, you know, if you're going to get a, if you're going to go the amp route, you're going to want to have a decent amp. So tubes die all the time, you know, or like there's not been, I don't know, I was going to say there's not really been any decent solid state heads that have been gig worthy in a while but that might not be true uh i know that orange bought out the orange crush um which a lot of people you know are favorable towards but you know there's more that can go wrong in those times especially when you're on tour as well because you can't always get to a shop if you need spare, you know, that's why I just like, um, that's why I just use the, the crate power block and just a shitty little modeler at the moment, you know, well, I guess the neural DSP is not shitty, but in fact, it's really, it's really good, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, line six, the the HX song is it's okay. You know, it's it does the job. Uh, it's not the best sounding rig, but I think the only thing that matters is really just getting on stage and play it. And, you know, just plug your gear and get the job done. As long as you can get the ideas across, and that, I mean that's what. Really really matters you know absolutely like it's it's great having new gear but at the end of the day you can have as much cool gear as you want man it doesn't make you play that yeah i need to remind myself of that every now and then <laughs> i think we all do dude but then you got like well you got people like joe like bringing out new shit all the time which is great, but you know, it, it's uh, well. I I wish I could afford gear, or like I wish I could afford to buy gear all the time. You know, because as soon as people bring stuff out, it's like, oh yeah, I want to buy that. Why? Because I just want to. You know, and then you'll get it, you'll play it. It's like, yeah, it's fucking awesome. And then, you know, another thing will come out and you're like well i need that shit now you know oh yeah for sure I, uh, i'm trying to make it more utilitarian and buy stuff that serves some sort of purpose at least and only try to only have one of each thing but you know how it goes that's it like you wind up uh, with like three or four overdrives before you know it well, so I got an email uh, from PayPal saying that they just booked my PayPal credit, like, automatically. And I'm just like, man. I'm, and I'm trying not to fucking buy more shit that I don't need, you know. Like, I just got an iron bird uh, that needs a lot of work doing to it. Um, that's the, I, I swore that was the last bit of gear that I'd buy, but, you know, it's probably not. I, I wish I could say that it's the last bit of gear that I'll buy this year, but it's also probably not true, because something will pop up, and I'm just like, mm, you know, I'm just going to buy that. Yeah. Yeah, here's what it is. It's still, at the end of the day, you could just be like, yeah, well, fuck it, it's fun, and I want it. That's it, man. Um, I need to get I need to get the Iron Bird fixed up actually, because but I think that's that's going to be an expensive job. I think it needs oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking your uh, Onger Iron Bird for some reason. I was like, what the hell's wrong with that thing? But 
uh, well, uh, your the one you Brad. Yeah. Yeah, it needs it needs a whole lot of doing it. Well, it, in fact, it literally needs everything doing it. What is a rack? A rack. You know? The only stuff I'm buying is two euro rack modules for my. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, dude. Since since are outrageous, man. Especially the old style ones. <laughs> Joe going, uh, Joe going full John Carpenter on us. Oh man, dude, I watched uh, Halloween two yesterday. Um, and would you watch uh, the original Halloween two, the second one? Oh, such a great film. The soundtrack as well is. I'm going. I'm going to see the new one tomorrow, actually. I, I didn't even see the last one. Oh really? Yeah. See, I really. I don't know I, why. I enjoyed it, man. But a lot of people say that it's so but I was like, no, dude. I really enjoyed it. And I'm excited. And I don't care if, I, if people if people say it sucks, I'd probably like it even more. Right. Uh, I I, I wanted to see that. What is it? Uh, Malignant. And I never got around to seeing that either. Never seen it. Uh, it was like the newest James Wan movie, so it got all kinds of hype. And the impression I got is that it's really weird and probably not for everyone. So, you know how it is. <laughs> Uh, I keep looking over at my like uh, list of like questions. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. But, but really, really, we haven't even really needed it too much. Oh, for real? Yeah. Really? I mainly that's good. Mainly just kind of use it as like uh, if there's dead air, I have like that to fall back on. But you know, uh, half half of these it just winds up just turning into like a hangout where we just bullshit about randomness. That's yeah, man. That's the, uh, that's how you do it, really, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's any kind of, like, set formula to how this works. Like, this is all new to me, you know. Not really. It, uh, like I said, it, like, I, these questions are more or less just kind of place filler. Yeah. Uh, as long as we talk about gear at some point during the live chat, that's about as much as <laughs> that's not, that's the that's the minimum requirement that I've set for these. Like yeah, like um, I I did one with John Coons from uh, Outer Heaven. Oh okay. And I think the first fifteen to twenty minutes we talked about aliens. <laughs> well, yeah, I, like actual. Beings from outer space, or the film Aliens, which was an incredible film. Uh, uh like actual extra, well, extraterrestrials, and how they tied in with uh, a lot of death metal bands, because it's such a popular thing to write about. And from there, it kind of somehow deviated into uh, uh, extraterrestrial life and spiritualism, and you know, and like. Kind of like some ancient alien stuff and oh man, I love that show, dude. Ancient aliens, man. Great. Don't get me started there because I will not <laughs> start like serious. But John, uh, yeah, John really likes that kind of shit. So we were just kind of nerding out on that for a while, and then started what? talking about some movies, and we I, we probably cleared the chat room out pretty quick, honestly. <laughs> There's four people consistently watch it. Meet Masonry, ask him what the sharpest guitar he has is. Uh, I guess, I don't know, man, they're all pretty sharp. Probably that I've got your Iron Bird, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I've got two Iron Birds, the V. I've, in fact, I've got two Vs, two Iron Birds, and some Stingray five string bass that I impulse bought because I was just like, well, you know, gotta have a bass, so right. why not? Uh but yeah I guess yeah, yeah the one. the seven the seven string iron bird. It's on my page somewhere. But 
It's not, so the sharpest guitar I have, it's all about the strap, dude. I got steel leather strap, oh, yeah. which is, yeah. well, yeah, oh, man, that, that is pointed. Like, even today, so it was on the floor just before rehearsal, and um, the vocalist in the band was just like, if you fell on that, that would be a hospital job. And it really, it really would. Like, it is lethal. Damn. That's the point, right? Yeah, well, that's it, man. They did a great job on their shots as well. And, like, they were... I saw pictures of them, and I was like, oh, I need one of these. But when, I, when you actually get the strap in person and you see just how big the spikes so protrude, I was just like, no, I no way. But it looks cool as shit, man. Like it's fucking, it's awesome. But worth every dollar. I I need to get one. I I'm waiting for a guitar to be worthy of it, though. <coughs> Any guitar is worthy of a steel wet strap, dude. Because well, our uh, our mutual friend Brad is supposed to be sending me a BC Rich bitch at some point. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, uh, that's awesome. It's an NJ series. Yeah. Uh, steel weather straps make any guitar 150% cooler. Like, you could get a Hello Kitty Squire stick on a steel weather strap and you would be the most metal person at that show. Unless everybody had steel weather straps. <laughs> I actually just, just sold uh, that BC Rich Beast that I had for a minute. Oh really? Yeah. Dude, you need to get uh, you need to get an iron bird. Join the iron bird gang. Like I love that, iron that, birds. I love iron birds, but at the same time, it's like everyone has an iron bird. You know what I mean? Yeah, but there's a reason for that, dude. Well, I'm also I'm at the point now. I've seen so many that the the only ones I've seen <coughs> are like really bad, badass, unique ones like yours. Joe has a fucking green one that I'm so envious of. Um. Brad, of course, has a has a has a badass one. Um, Michael Monday, Frozen Soul, has a sick one. Brad's got two. Wait, yeah, Brad's got two great ones. He's got he's got a Ram bird. The Ram bird, I forgot. Like, like, and then he's got the orange, like the blood bird that he got made. Man, that is incredible. Um, but. Like as soon as it, as soon as he said, "Dude, do you want to buy that iron bird?" I was like, "I need a six string iron bird, but it needs so much. Like it needs a paint job. It needs fixing up. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that bird up and running by New Year for sure. Because having a seven string iron bird when you're playing like six six string bands, it's like I've tried playing the songs on the seven string bass like it makes having the seven string pointless, you know? So I'm going to like write music for a seven string and then I'm going to write music for a six string and just use iron birds for everything, hopefully. And retire the V. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess the other thing would be the fact that you can't really find them anymore, at least not for ridiculous, you know, jacked oh, up prices. Too. Yeah, dude. The um, the resale price on a on any pretty much any BC rich right now is just fucking stupid. Like, yeah. it's like you're looking at at least a thousand. You know, would I ever get a seven string sell? That'd be cool. Like I've the seen, Mark like, Rizzo or something. Oh, yeah, the Mark Rizzo one. Yeah, that looks badass. Yeah, I'd, I'd fuck with that. 100%. One of the, 
one of the followers on here bought uh, Iquin Cam. Uh, Cam Boggs left Sangasuga Bog. Uh, he was selling that Mark Rizzo one that he had. Um, somebody on the page bought, like, wound up with that and bought it. I, I don't remember who it is, though. Yeah, I saw that. The seven string root and BC Rich is, yeah. it's like 7,000 US or something, which is just stupid money. Yeah. Like, I don't, is it a custom shop or is like, I think that's just for the production model. I, so like, I, th I think, I think Rutan is a great guitarist, but I wouldn't pay seven grand for a production model guitar. I'm not well, sure. Like you would think it is at least made in like, like, you know, USA, like US made at that level. You know what I mean? It's, it's one. 100% US, but it's probably still just production or limited. But I don't, I don't think I like anyone enough to pay that shit. You know, yeah. I re I really wish they bought out the Pat V and not oh. the Pat V. They, they so they bought out a Pat O'Brien V, right? But it was like that red one, um, like it was like a red one, um. It was pretty cool, single humbucker, you know. But you know the the all black V that he uses, and it's got the widow. Mm -hmm. It's got a widow beast head stock. It's got black, uh, black diamond inlays and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It just looks murdered out, man. It looks fucking awesome. And it's like, why didn't they? Why did they miss the mark on that? Why didn't they bring that one out? You know, because that would have been killer. In fact, while I'm on the subject, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant now. Guitar companies are missing the mark on so many different things. Like, if Jackson bought out a King V with a reverse headstock, that'd be fucking killer. Yeah. But they're not. They're just not doing it. They're doing like they're doing a Rhodes with a reverse headstock, but they're not doing a King V with a reverse headstock. You know. Um, then Ivan, they might have a seven string King V with a reverse headstock. It, they got the Corey Balo. I mean, if I'm saying that right, Corey from Trivium's got a signature one, but it's not yeah. an actual just straight old King V, you know, right? Yeah, um, Ibanez brought out um, uh, that badass, uh, so they bought out a seven string Iceman right mm -hmm. which is which is which is great it looks great but it's like dude bring out a six string people who people just wanted a right. six string ice man for so long and they, it's just like they're like yeah dude we could do that but we're just going to release it in a seven but it's like they, they released a xiphos in seven and six it's like dude just, just release an ice man don't get me started on the current BC Ridge fucking catastrophe of what, whatever the hell they're trying to do because, like, yeah, that's just like, yeah, it's just, yes. it just sucks. Everything they've released is pretty much garbage for the last, <laughs> you know. Well, for for as long as I can remember now, they haven't released a decent guitar. And they play, the, the thing about BC Rich as a company as well, they, whoever's doing their social media is like either a genius or the worst, the worst social media manager ever. Because it's like they only advertise guitars that you can't buy. Yeah. So they'll they'll advertise all the custom shop stuff, but nobody can buy those because they can't they either can't afford it, the wait is too long, or you know, you're just not taking orders. And then right. all of the production models are a too expensive for what they are, hot garbage, and no one has them in stock. So 
it's like, come on, what are you doing? Um, yeah, so there's, like, I, I don't know what's happening with the guitar world right now with guitar manufacturers. Um, another one as well is, like, um, ESP LTD. They, they bought out the Black Metal series, and I don't know why, but even though it looks pretty much exactly the same as my guitar i hate the cut on the esp arrows you know i wish they would just i wish they would just just do a sort of speed v like the one that kerry king used to use back in the day oh yeah for sure i love that thing the fucking uh, primal rage yeah v's and yeah like just fucking really stop trying to reinvent the wheel man just just Make shit that's fucking tried and true, you know? And people need to just start putting reverse headstocks on everything. I, uh... <laughs> my bit... Yeah, I know what you mean. It seems like uh, there's an awful lot of close, like, close, but not quite there designs from a lot of, like, the big metal manufacturers, like... Uh, I, I I dig the black metal series. I, uh, it's a it's a great series. I had a um, I had a ES, a EC black metal for a, oh, a yeah. while. For, yeah. Uh, it was a great guitar. It sounded great. It played great. It just you know wasn't spiky enough. Yeah. My uh, my thing is. Uh, I like a neck pickup, you know what I mean? Like, I like I don't have anything against single pickup guitars, but I still like doing the shreddy solo stuff, even if it's just me here at the house. So if I don't have, I don't know, I, I miss it. Like, think, think like, you know, old, like, like old school uh, Hoffman Brothers era deicide, like those fucking sick sick solos dude like like eric hoffman would be ripping you know like those crazy sweeps and awesome fucking runs like yngwie-esque kind of runs you know what well, i mean man. I, I, love, um, I love like that bubbly 90s neck pickup shred kind of sound i get that like i like the sound as well dude but can i play it fuck no <laughs> that's why that's why every guitar i own has just a bridge pickup later joe thanks for stopping by bro hell yeah machine gun kelly ruined the esp metal series machine gun kelly ruined everything dude when he came out with that bullshit slip not comment oh god <laughs> I, He's, you seen his Schecter, his pink Schecter guitar? Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> God damn. That is awful. And it's a Telecaster as well. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 have, I have like absolutely nothing for the guy. He He's put out one song that I thought was all right. And then I found out, oh, he's he's just like a walking meme. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? He is, uh, uh, yeah, dude. I don't know. But he, he was in like a little corner of rap that I didn't really like or listen to. Not that I don't like rap, because I do. But like he was just in that little corner of it that I don't fuck with at all. And... Then he started doing pop punk, and I don't fuck with pop punk either. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not his demographic. So I <laughs> like uh, I don't know. I, I ain't got much to say on the dude's music. What you know? But uh, the dude seems like he's I don't know, kind of a punk. So yeah, I don't know. It's about all. I, it's all I have to say about that. Yeah, he's um, he's pretty controversial right now. I love how, like, literally though, like, dude, he's ripped. 
Like, he ripped Eminem and then fucking got called out by all the rap dudes and then he ripped... Um, he ripped uh, Slipknot and then everyone started digging up in his past because he ripped Slipknot and I was finding that funny and thing. People yeah, love I... those pink pointy guitars. Would you buy a... Fuck yeah, I'd buy a pink WR1. I, uh, anytime that I see like celebrity beefs, I can't help but think that it's just some kind of marketing ploy. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like people are just trying to get attention one way or another. One hundred percent, dude. Like that's that's why I'm kind of immediately dismissive of that shit. I don't like. I don't care. His guitar sure. looks like shit, though. Oh, it does, man. And he probably can't play it great either. What do you mean, dude? He can do like three power chords. What are you talking about? That's, cool, man. that's more. That's like 200% more power chords than me. But yeah, I wonder what his rig's like. like. I wonder what his fucking rig's like. I wonder what his guitar tech has to go through to get those three power chords sounding crisp. And creamy, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, <laughs> all right, guys. Just um, about if if we can get me to ten thousand followers, uh, we might have a chance to get an MGK <laughs> for a Rick chat. That's it, man. Yeah, we'll get him on here. We'll talk over his head about metal bands that he probably thinks are for boomers. Um, I. I would have no fucking clue what to say to that guy. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, there's a. I don't know. Like, what would you say to him? Like, I, I know. I, well, you couldn't say, "Oh yeah, I really like your music, dude," because that would be a lie. <laughs> Why your EQ settings? Yes. He's got to use some sort of like. I bet he has like an Axe FX3 or a Kemper. It's got to be one of those. I, I, I would bet money he's either using an Axe FX3 or a Kemper. He's definitely rigged out, man. It's, and he has no business having that shit either. I, I bet he just went to Sweetwater's amp section and did the, did the little search bar, highest price to lowest price. And he just was looking for shit and would like had his tech help him shop for something that wouldn't break down. They would never have to do maintenance on it. You know, whatever. Or like, you're like, yeah, whatever. As long as you don't have to fuck with it again. You know? That's it, man. Like, yeah, I've, I'm saying this. I've never actually listened to the guy. Like, you could bring the rips. I doubt it, but you know, <laughs> I've never actually listened to a Machine Gun Kelly song, and I don't think I ever will. That like his name sounds too much like R. Kelly, and from what I've read on Facebook, they got a lot in common with, you know, their oh, yeah. appetites as well. Yeah, for sure. But you know, do I think he'll do country next? He'll do something. I mean, if uh, David Vincent can go from Morbid Angel to Outlaw Country, I mean, sky's the limit. <coughs> yeah, but David Vincent was good. Machine Gun Kelly is not. You know, it, it, I love David Vincent. I don't care what anyone says. Even with his, like, silly cowboy hat. Uh, like, to me, he it's like he gets a pass. Like, his country <laughs> is terrible. Like, <coughs> And and I, I actually like a lot of country music. David Vincent's country music is shit. Um, <laughs> but, like, he's so awesome that I don't care. It's like, fuck it. He's having fun. You know what I mean? For, he's happy. And he deserves to be happy. That's it, dude. But, even, yeah. though he's, even though he sucks. Yeah. It's like he's done. He's done enough awesome music. He can put out some shitty stuff here and there for his own amusement. What are we you know gonna be doing when we're old? You know, like what the hell am I gonna be doing when I'm old? Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody pointed out. Uh, Frank B. Metal pointed out Ultimas. 
Ultimas, I think that's how you say it. It's it's his uh, it's like an ex member of Mayhem and David Vincent. Um, which it's member? Actually of, which member of Mayhem? One of the old, one of the guitar players that no one remembers. Uh, I think I think it was that it might have been the guy who directly replaced Euronymous, not T Lock. Uh, it was I, I don't know. It was. What? Was I, it? it might have been one of the guys off Blas Blas Warfare. Blasphemer. Yes. Yeah, everyone knows Blas Blasphemer. That guy fucking. Yeah, he's like responsible for probably. Nah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say Maybe. that because I'm. Um, yeah, I, I, I like Telok. And I like what Telok has written for Mayhem. But personally, I think that Blasphemer writing, uh, and this is, I'm going to get probably get a lot of shit from the uh, Dimistorius Dom Sopranos fan crew as well. But Chimera Man is like my favorite, it's my favorite fucking Mayhem album. Like, hands down, it's a, it's a really fast. And uh, yeah, Blasphema is responsible for that. So I've heard, I've heard somebody else say that too. So I think I need to just read it. Maybe I, maybe I was a little harsh and dismissive. <laughs> uh, that was an era like that era of mayhem. I never really fucked with too much. Uh, I, I think at the very least, it's probably. And I'm just, I'm just speaking like widely because um i don't i don't think that those albums get nearly as much love as the classic stuff and honestly i think even the new album like demon damon however you say it i think even it kind of gets more attention i feel like people talk about it more than they do you know i think like Chimera and i think with the um, so with the the um Demistar the mysterious uh is like the classic black metal album you know it's like yeah it and, and the, especially there's a lot of controversy that surrounds the album with what went on sure. in the scene at the time um so that's like why that's sort of regarded as that's why that gets all the attention you know yeah and 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 it's a great album but and then uh, with the sort of the latest stuff like uh, Esoteric Warfare and Demon. Um, with the, I said Psychic Warfare. Ah, uh, <laughs> I I, yeah. Um, with the, um, because Telok is very active now as well on social media as well. There's a lot, mm -hmm. there's a lot of promotion and, um, He's like, um, I don't know. I don't know why that gets more like also with Mayhem as well being uh, such a diverse bunch of people. They've got uh, Charles Hediger, I think his name is, who was ex paid with Phil. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of like, they're, they're, they're a huge band, but I think. Telok is more of a technical writer, you know. I think that his songs are more interesting to listen to. They're more, there's more of the atmosphere involved in the writing, you know. It's like there's a lot more going on. Whereas with um, with Chimera, it's like very straightforward riffs, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I can see that. I'll uh, I'll have to revisit that for sure. I think I like you, you just don't hear that album talked about a whole lot. So I think maybe that's why I just never gave it a chance. I thought maybe it's like ah, oh, those are the. I think I wrote it off as those are the the, the years of, of members trying to hold on to the name or something like that. I don't know. It was. I don't know. It's it's an era that like I haven't really like listened to 
to like a uh, grand declaration of war is not really an album that I listen to yeah. a lot. Um, Order de Ko, I think is the album after Ka Chimera, um, around 2007, again, is not an album that I really listen to. Uh, I think with Chimera, I just kind of like down purchased it <laughs> back in the day. Um, and then the old time. Yeah, uh, and then you know, listen to it and was just like, "Wow, this is this is crazy. This doesn't sound like the mysterious Dom Satana at all. Oh, it sounds way heavier." Uh, and that's why it's like there was that nostalgic feeling of like being that age, listening to that music, listening to that album, and there's more that goes on with music. You know, there's more that goes on with people attaching themselves to their favorite albums rather than it being just a good album, you know? It's like the experience of what's going on around you when you're listening to that particular album, which is why people be, which is probably why it's like my favorite album, but not somebody else's, you know? Right. I don't know if that's, sounds weird that's just the way i feel about it anyway i mean i get it for sure um that is, that is one of the interesting things when you have bands with uh such a legacy like that when you know s spanning so many years and so many member changes and the album's just like, so different you know from one to the other um, that's right you're you're definitely going to your demographic will shift a little bit, you know? But then you've got, sure. you've got like, it, it can't have been like easy to fill those shoes either, you know? Right. Um, so that, that must have been a very uh, intimidating process to, to like, not for like, to fill the guitar issues, but to do the name of the band justice, you know, because you've got fans worldwide, you know, that are going to be buying that album, and you put yourself on the line as as a writer. Um, that's kind of like, like that. That would be very intimidating, I think. So, so I think. Uh, I think Mr. T, Mr. Tallock has done a pretty good job with the recent albums. I, it's a stellar job, you know. Um, and I like the new, I like the new stuff better than the old stuff. But Chimera to yeah. me is like, there's some about that album for sure. Oh, I get it for sure. I. I have a hard time stepping into a band with, uh, that, I mean, just being that controversial historically, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, well, not like I have a moral problem with it or anything like that. It'd just be like, it, it'd just be weird. Like there's not, there's not too many other instances that you can think of where a band has had that kind of controversy. And right. it's like, how do you, it's like, I don't, I wouldn't even know how to really approach that or talk about about it or address it or anything you know what i mean like that's a weird situation to find yourself in i think um because it was so long in the past you yeah. know yeah especially with the uh the two members of mayhem that aren't from that era so that would be both guitarists uh, right they get asked a lot of questions you know probably uh but but I think the response is, you know, it's, it's just not really spoken about because, you know, they, they weren't there. It's not really, it's part of the band's history for sure, but it's not part of their history. So they're just there to give the fans what they want musically, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course. <clears throat> 
course, there's a lot of uh, controversy surrounding the early days of not just uh, mayhem, but all of that sort of scene. Um, and now those days are in the past and the music is still being written and we're all grateful for it. Sure. Even, even though it came from an ugly place, you know, it created something with much more value. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use that as sort of a jumping point to redirect it back at you. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Mayhem, you know, pretty influential for, I'd say, just about any black metal band, whether they want to admit it or not. Um, who, uh, who else would you say is a big influence as far as, like, uh, Wolfram Crown or any other project that you've done or, you know, anything creative that you've done within that genre, who would you say uh, uh, influences you strongly? Summoning. Okay. Summoning are a great band. Uh, they're not like sort of a direct influence, but, but they're definitely some, they're definitely, I, I just love them. Like any band that I love is pretty much an influence, you know? Um, controversial, but so there's a lot of dissection influence in the new stuff that hasn't been released, and a lot of summoning influence. Uh, as, I'm a as, huge dissection fan. Yeah, same indeed. Uh, so, as far as the past is concerned with Wolven Crown, I can't really speak for what the influence uh, is there because I'm, I've not been a member since the very beginning. I only joined in 2017. Um, and when I joined, there was a, there was already basically half of the first album written. So I didn't really have a lot to do with the writing process in of album one. But I've had a lot more to do with the writing process in album two. Uh, it's been more of a shared effort. So um, there's there's a lot more of sort of influences that I bring to the table from like stuff that I like. So dissection, like the sort of harmonies mm -hmm. that we that they're kind of known for. I've tried to like incorporate. <laughs> more into like our writing and stuff like that what the which which is the end all be all dissection album for you oh man come on that there are um i don't the sumblin no wait <laughs> Yeah, the song. Well, then. Yeah, I mean, there's, was no, a, there's, there's no wrong answer for sure. But. No, but like, but I really like um, Rain Chaos as well. Yeah, like, but they're all great. They're all incredible albums. Like, it's just such a difficult question. But I guess if I if I had to pick one, it would be the song. Well, then. It's. Uh, <laughs> It, it is kind of interesting. People seem to, there are people that are very strong Somberland fans and very strong Rain Chaos fans. And then everybody just seems kind of okay with Storm of the Lights Bang. So, Storm of the Lights Bang is a great album as well. Um, yeah, no one ever hates on it. It's just, it's always the middle one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like, Everyone, it, I don't know. <laughs> Just interesting. And then Rain Chaos, I guess by that point, everybody had mixed feelings about the guys in the band. So yeah. I think that's kind of a weird album for a lot of people. No, for sure. I really like that album, though, dude. Oh, like, I love it. It's, a, it's an absolute shame. Like, I know that, like, he kind of wanted to leave 
this mortal plane on a high and stuff, but I don't know, man. I think it's uh, a shame that he went so young, you know. Yeah. Um, I even, I was reading like some quote from his brother talking about it and everything. And I don't know. It, it was fucking weird to me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you've seen it too. Like where he was kind of like explaining for his brother. I like, tried to explain for John now. Yeah. Uh, it, like their whole belief system and and how he was trying to leave on his terms on like you said like on a high note basically like like, like he felt like he, like he felt like he was done he's like he did what he wanted to do and he was he was leaving on his own terms i'm like i fucking guess <laughs> yeah like well that's it but like dude man like imagine how do you have written an album after rain chaos and it would have been just fucking killer. And then he, he could have just sat there and just been like, you know what, dude, I'm so glad that I'm still around. I'm so glad that I've made that offer. Yeah. But it sucks as well, because we'll never see Dissection live. So anyone that's lucky enough to have seen that band live, I'm very, very envious. But, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's it's a fucking shame for sure. He, John was crazy talented. Oh man, like just his lead work, his vocal work. He he was like the whole package. Like he was what exactly what you wanted from a front man. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the James Hetfield of black metal. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> well. <laughs> So we got your uh, we got your influences down. What uh, what goals do you have set for yourself musically or for your band? Uh, just keep doing it for as long as we can, you know. Write good records, travel as much as possible, play to as many people as possible, and you know, meet as many meet as many many people out there as we possibly can, you know. Obviously, I'm, I'm under no illusion that I'll ever make a living off doing this, you know. There will probably always be a day job. But ultimately, if I could make money, if I could make a living off music, obviously I would, but it's not the be all and end all of why we do this you know it's just the goals are just to keep doing it for as long as we can and keep enjoying it right on well man uh probably gonna wrap this up so i can uh, start getting ready for my night shift but absolutely uh, no problem dude we will uh, we'll close this out. Normally do a top four death metal bands, but uh, we'll change it up a little bit though. Give me uh, top top two death, top two black metal. All right. All right, top two death is decapitated circa year two thousand to two thousand and seven. Fuck yeah. Cannibal Corpse. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Black Metal, I would say Windeer. Okay. And, and Dissection. And yeah. in, in before anyone says they're not Black Metal, they're deaf, they're Black, they're a Black Metal band through and through. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> they, I, I typically lump them in with black metal. They, I mean, I know that they're part of like that whole Swedish melodic death scene as well. I don't know. I, I don't get into qualms about that one. 
I, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I would def I always, I think of them more black metal for sure. If yeah, nothing they, else, they're, they're de they definitely lean more in that camp than anything. But well, dude, this is, uh, this is awesome. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing this with, uh, well, with you and then like a couple other buddies like Brad I need to get him on soon. Yeah. Too. I did get him on. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We, we were talking about it like not that long ago either, but, uh, we, we just didn't get to the point of actually setting up a date. <laughs> and, then, and then me and you figured it out in three, three days. Yeah. Yeah, dude. No, it's Sorry, so Brad. Good, Sorry, dude. Brad. <laughs> but, uh, Dude, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Um, again, fucking love your music. Uh, when or if you get a chance to do some more videos, I'll absolutely eat that shit up. I love your <coughs> channel. And uh, if, any, you, anybody, if anybody hasn't checked it out, you know, go for it. He actually, the production quality uh, actually surprised me. It's really fucking good. Uh, lots of cool covers and some original music on there as well you got a, yeah you got some originals on there now right oh yeah, yeah. like yeah i forgot about the um well yeah yeah they are original because they're from bands i play in for sure so okay but yeah all right man uh that's awesome and can't wait to see what else you put out awesome dude thank you for having me on absolutely we'll do just again sometime. Oh, for sure, man. Just hit me up. All right. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. And y'all have a good weekend. All right.